There are so many people who throw their skincare in the trash because they think it doesn't work for them when it's actually a great product and they just might not be using it right. Have you ever had that experience where you put on skincare or makeup or a sunscreen and it starts to gum up under your skin? You actually feel like these little balls of product gumming up. Someone in a comment section once said that their skincare was noodling on them. Well, this is not an isolated phenomenon and you're probably not the only person that it's happened to. The issue is a lot of people don't know what causes it and how to prevent it. Because yes, sometimes it's your makeup, but sometimes it's skincare. And how to layer to get the most out of your products can help you understand how to work with your skin better and actually get the most out of your products and make them work for you. I've got a ton of my favorites here, everything from some Holy Hydration to The Ordinary and Wishful, who is sponsoring a portion of today's video. But the most important thing that you need to know is about your own routine. What ingredients are you using? Because this gets into cosmetic chemistry and how products are actually made. When we're looking at certain products, most of them are liquids. Water, aqua is our universal solvent. But a lot of our favorite ingredients, such as niacinamide or ascorbic acid, are actually powders. They're dry things that ended up getting blended into some form of liquid. Now, how is that supposed to work? Kind of think of it like if you're cooking or baking, you want to mix your wet ingredients first and your dry ingredients first, then combine them. Well, this works great in some circumstances, but it doesn't work as great in others, depending on how chemists and manufacturers mix those ingredients. And sometimes when those ingredients mix together, they can ball up. Or even if they don't ball up in the product, if you layer these ingredients over or under other things, these ingredients can mix together and actually cause small reactions and chemical changes on your face that lead to gumming or pilling on the skin. There are also just certain ingredients that are more prone to doing this out the gate. For example, uh, a crunchy sunscreen formula. This is a, a very crunchy sunscreen formula. Or products that have ingredients like dimethicone or silicones. Silicones are not bad for the skin. They're actually wonderful for wound healing and scarring. But if you apply too much of a silicone-based product, or if you're layering multiple products over each other that all have silicones, this can cause quite a bit of pilling on the skin. And especially if you are applying a dry makeup powder over a wet skincare product, that can actually cause pilling because of the way the powder sticks to the wet formula of a sunscreen or a moisturizer that you may have put on your skin. So how the frick do we fix it? Well, first things first, I wanna give you a little bit of a cheat sheet. I want you to be aware of these ingredients. Turn and learn your skincare products so you can actually look for ingredients that one, not only benefit your skin, but two, might be a little bit more prone to pilling. The first is our beloved niacinamide. Niacinamide is vitamin B3. It is fantastic, but it is a powder that ends up getting mixed into a liquid. And sometimes it can get gummy or chunky in your products. For example, if you ever open up one of your products and you notice that there's kind of like, grimy crust around the edges that kind of flakes off when you open or close the bottle, that tells you that when this formula dries down, it leaves some of that powder behind. And if it's doing it here on the bottle, it's more likely to do it on your skin. Now there are other products that I love that when you open them up, you notice that they don't do that, even if you spill a little bit around the outside. This is something that if your skincare is prone to pilling or if you like to layer a ton of products, you wanna look for products that don't tend to do that because then they're less likely to also leave that residue behind on your face. Again, this is a nice and product from The Ordinary. I absolutely love this one. The Ordinary also has the Buffet, which I think they just renamed, by the way. These are both great, but they do tend to get a little bit gummy. This one is the Thirst Trap from Wishful. I love this. And this does not pill on the skin, even though it does have HA and peptides. And yes, this is currently how I am getting hyaluronic acid in my routine because I stopped using a dedicated hyaluronic acid product. Now, what I also love about this is that it is a serum, so you can use it under moisturizers or sunscreens, but it also has a nice dry down texture that feels a little tacky. So it doesn't gum up on the skin, it doesn't get pilly, but it actually adheres and holds onto foundation. And that gets into our next topic of layering. You want to understand what products you're using and how they work when they're layered. Not only layered over each other, but over other categories of products as well. So for example, is your moisturizer going to play well with a thick mask or with a sunscreen? And then is your powder cosmetics or a liquid foundation going to play well over that? The best thing you can do is actually test them out by putting these in layers on your skin. But here's the trick. You want to make sure that you're giving each layer time to dry. So let that layer dry down completely. And a lot of times less is more, especially if you're using a good skincare product that has high potency ingredients, you don't need more of the product. You need to just make sure that it's getting onto and into the skin. So applying just the right amount, letting it soak in, waiting, and then applying your next layer can help you get to your end result of glowy, gorgeous looking skin that lays down perfectly under makeup without a bunch of the gunkiness and the pilling in the way. If you are specifically struggling with pilling when it comes to your makeup, for example, 
example, how it reacts with things like your skincare or your sunscreen, I would highly recommend two things. One is oil and then the other is a setting spray. Oil is fantastic because it kind of smooths over keratinocytes, your skin cells, and it not only makes them look glowing and fresh, but it locks in your moisturizer underneath. Now on top of that, you can mix oils in with your foundation. And a lot of foundations are naturally oil based. So they actually work very well if you're putting them on top of oils in the skin. This is a fantastic get even rose oil that has a ton of antioxidants in it. And we're gonna speak about antioxidants and vitamin C in just a second, because that can be a problem. So that can be one option. Another one is some sort of setting spray. This is kind of like a spray moisturizer plus setting spray. It's from Euphoria, it's really good. You could use this or you could use your regular setting spray and just make sure that you're spraying a light mist of setting spray between your skincare ingredients and between your powder cosmetics. A lot of setting sprays actually dry down on the skin. So it allows your powders to go on without gumming up and getting that cakey, bally, pilling feeling. And we did mention that vitamin C can be a bit of a problem, but when is it a problem and when is it not? Well, remember that there are many different forms of vitamin C, but one of the most commonly used is ascorbic acid or L-ascorbic acid, which yes, is a powder. And remember, if we're trying to mix a powder into a liquid product, sometimes it doesn't mix in completely. I am very picky about my vitamin Cs. I only use really good ones, so I don't struggle with this issue a lot of times. But sometimes if you do mix a very high potency vitamin C with something like a skincare oil or something like a niacinamide-based serum, you can actually see a little bit of a cosmetic chemistry reaction happening on your face. And you might notice that the skincare starts to pill up on its own when they're mixed. This can be really frustrating and there's no surefire way to see what's happening. I would just say that if you notice that you're mixing vitamin C and oils together and it tends to happen, avoid those products together. Or if you're mixing niacinamide and vitamin C together and that happens, avoid those together. But if that's the case, what are you supposed to do? I would actually recommend finding a skincare oil that has vitamin C in it or finding an oil soluble vitamin C. Again, this one is the Get Even Oil and I am obsessed with this. It has jojoba, but it also has carrot. This carrot seed is fantastic. You are a savvy skin intellectual and you know that carrots have beta carotene, which is related to basically vitamin A, our retinoid family. But this also has rose hip and rose. This smells so good. It is fragranced. I love it. But just note that it is fragranced in case that's something that you're working about. And I find that this one has a nice antioxidant boost and it plays well over many things. But if you're not looking for a skincare oil with vitamin C and you just want an oil soluble vitamin C, this is expensive, but this is a good one. This is the Triple C Ferulic from Paracone MD. I consider this like a dupe for the SkinCeuticals because it's a cruelty free version. This is just the package because uh, I am out of my main box. I have to get another one. They are very pricey, but you can get them on sale. I love this because it's an oil soluble version of vitamin C. It actually penetrates into the skin. This does as well, because remember our skin naturally creates oils. So if we use oil-based or oil-soluble products, they will basically use the oil our skin naturally creates as like a little bridge, a little tunnel into the depths of our skin where they can get to work. That's why salicylic acid is great for acne. Salicylic acid is oil-soluble. Vitamin C is water-soluble, but there are some oil-soluble forms. And again, if you get your antioxidant boost from something like an oil, especially if it has ingredients like rosehip or boab or carrot seed, this has those antioxidants in there and can get into the skin. Another ingredient that you just want to be aware of are silicones. And silicones can come under many different names. We're talking about dimethicone, polymethyl sesquioxane. There's a lot of them and they're not to be feared because not all silicones are bad. They're not going to cause breakouts and they're actually used in emergency medicine for wound healing. But unfortunately, depending on how the product is formulated, it can tend to ball up when it dries down on the skin or if you use too much. So just turn and learn your ingredients and be aware of silicones. And if you do have a favorite product that has silicones or tends to get gummy, use less of it. Look at what you're layering it with and try to use a little bit less than normal. You may be surprised with how far some of your skincare products can go and how just using less of them, you know, can really save the day. Now, the one instance where this doesn't always come into play is sunscreen. You should never skimp on your sunscreen. You don't want to use too little. And this is really where it comes down to learning your ingredients and playing around with what works for you. This is the sunscreen that while I do like, I think I got a bad batch. Like it's a little bit crunchy. This is the guard up from Burst and while it is a nice daily mineral sunscreen, I would recommend trying to find a lighter weight sunscreen that doesn't tend to ball up as much. Um, and a lot of sunscreen is trial and error. One thing you also want to be aware of is pigment in your sunscreens. You know that there are two main types of sunscreen, the chemical slash organic sunscreens and the physical or mineral or inorganic sunscreens. Remember, the physical ones are the ones that have ingredients like zinc that are actually a powder that is then put into a liquid, which brings us back to some of the same issues that we discussed earlier. 
But on top of that, some sunscreens have pigment, which gives it a nice little tint. Now, while this is great, that pigment is often a powder that is then mixed with a liquid. So for a lot of mineral tinted sunscreens, you basically have two different powders that are mixed in with a liquid, and it can be really hard to get it right. There are some examples of this that I love. For example, this is the Weekend Skin from Iris and Romeo. This is wonderful because it is a mineral sunscreen with a tint that doesn't ball or pill up. And this actually has vitamin C in it as well as an antioxidant boost. And I have found that this does not pill up on me the way, you know, some other sunscreens have. But you do want to make sure that you're finding a sunscreen that works for you. And sometimes going with an organic sunscreen, meaning a chemical sunscreen, that's just going to be better. A lot of people find chemical sunscreens absorb into the skin better. They're really, really lightweight, so they don't ball up at all. And a lot of people like that feeling. So it's a little bit of trial and error, but look at different sunscreens and find the one that's best for you. Again, if you literally type into YouTube, Cassandra Bankson sunscreen, Cassandra Bankson acne prone sunscreen, Cassandra Bankson chemical sunscreen. We've probably done a video on the product or the topic since we have like 12 years of a YouTube library now. Holy sh**. Holy sh**. Have I been sitting here for 12 years? No, I haven't because I actually got a chair. Did you know for the first 10 years I sat on the floor for the first 12? 11 years. I got a chair and it bounces and I am such a happy person. This is what it's like to be an adult. You have a lot to look forward to. Chairs aside, sunscreen is something you don't want to skimp on. You just have to find the right one for you. Now, what happens if every single sunscreen, every single product you put on your face gets caught in your skin and you feel like your skincare is peeling, but it's even gumming up in your skin cells and your skin is dry and flaky and peeling? Maybe. That's not just skincare pilling. That is a need for some exfoliation. You see, if our skin is crusty, uh, and I can say that because I am a crusty person myself, if you tend to produce a lot of oil, you have a lot of blackheads, sebaceous filaments, or you just run your fingers across your skin and it feels like sandpaper, exfoliation may be the best bet for you. Because if you can imagine you're applying a nice smooth product over a ruffled, jagged surface, it can get caught in some of these areas, especially if it is something that has a tint. So making sure that you are exfoliating responsibly can be a lifesaver. Now, just like there are different types of sunscreens, there are different types of exfoliants. We have chemical and we have physical ones. I love chemical exfoliants because they exfoliate evenly, whereas a lot of physical exfoliants can be a little too abrasive on the skin. And a lot of people don't move them around evenly. There is a hybrid in the middle, which I love, which we will talk about because there's a catch to this, but there are also chemical exfoliants. And as long as your skin isn't overly sensitive, things like AHAs and BHAs can work wonders. This is one from Paula's Choice. It's bright purple. This this is potent, like we're talking ordinary chemical peeling solution potent. And it is a beautiful galactic holographic purple unicorn mask, but it is 25% AHA and 2% BHA. Remember BHA is salicylic acid, so it's oil soluble, whereas AHA is water soluble. Those are a little bit better if you want hydration in the skin. But this might be too much for some people, which is where this comes in. I actually purchased this as a part of a Sephora shop with me. And I spoke about how these cellulose products gum up on the skin, but they gum up up in your hand, even with a glove, regardless of whether or not they touch your skin. These can be amazing if you are someone who likes physical exfoliation, but doesn't want to scratch off your face. The only thing I want you to know is that this isn't the product like peeling off your skin. This is the product having a liquid evaporate and leaving over beneficial skincare ingredients like enzymes that do exfoliate. And then you almost have this physical, it's almost like a gommage or a paste that you can rub across the skin. And it's fantastic because you are really gently exfoliating without tearing your skin open with like walnut shells and apricot pits. But at the same time, you are getting that physical sensation and you are gently removing that top layer of the skin. Now, the reason that I do love this one, it's called the Yo Glow. It's because it has pineapple enzymes in it. Enzymes are fantastic because they're such a gentle form of exfoliation. Whereas like your BHAs, they're really good, but they're potent. This is potent. This is better for more sensitive skin. I'm gonna look at these. But I also want to put things like this on my crusty face to help get rid of some of those crusty, flaky areas so that when my other skincare products go on my skin, they can actually go on a bit more smooth. You know, exfoliation also helps with the absorption of the formula. If you can imagine that you have a bunch of dead, flaky cornflakes on your face, your actual products aren't going to be able to penetrate or to do what they need to do. But if you remove those dead, gritty cornflakes, your skincare can actually penetrate into soft, smooth skin. And that way, your skincare and those active ingredients can actually get to work. Now this is actually where we talk about eye creams as well. This is one of the places that you might 
actually want to use an eye cream, but this also depends on you, your skincare routine, and formulas. You see, if your moisturizer works really well on your face, you can dab it on as an eye cream. The skin here is the same as the skin here, which is the same as the skin here anatomically. You still have pores, sebaceous glands, etc. And a lot of companies package up eye cream in a tiny little tube, but they jack the price up for the same ingredients. I love Murad, but Murad is one of the brands that does this with their eye creams. However, if you're worried about skincare pilling under makeup, this is where you may want to use an eye cream. If your moisturizer pills under your concealer and you hate it, don't put this moisturizer under where you're going to put your under eye concealer. So you can use your moisturizer with your foundation and you may want to find an eye cream that works with your concealer so that that way they don't pill and gum up. If your eyes are really dehydrated and you need a really thick moisturizer here and the rest of your face just needs something light, that's another time that you may want to use an eye cream for thick hydration and something light on the rest of the skin. Or the opposite, if your under eyes are really oily, you might want a light gel or serum type of eye product and then you might want something thick thickums thick on the rest of your face with your foundation. And that is of course going to depend from person to person, but as long as you're turning and learning those ingredients and as long as you're understanding how they're working to work for you, that's when you can choose things that are right for your skin, that play well with each other and are perfect for your routine. Again, let me know if you would like me to do a video where I put some exfoliants under a microscope. I think that could be so fun. And another huge thank you to Wishful Skin for partnering with us on a portion of this video. They are actually having a three year anniversary, which is super exciting. If you'd like, all of the details are below as well as all of the, as well as all of the things that I am dropping. You see, even though I'm sitting on a chair at a desk, I'm still hydrating the carpet. You know, some things just never change, okay? Either way, I'm going to go rub this off of my hand and onto my face. Then I'm going to hydrate it with a beautiful serum and a sunscreen that doubles as my moisturizer because it is the morning time yeah. and SPF is your BFF. So do remember to reapply your sunscreen and always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.